So hey everyone, my name is Celso Philip. Um, I'm, I'm a developer advocate at Stripe. Um, big fan of Dapper, I've been using it since before V1. Um, and I'm really excited to speak with everyone today about uh, how we can do messaging and stuff like that. Um, really sorry I couldn't be there in person. That was the original plan, but you know, things change, things happen. But uh, hopefully you all will be able to get some good, um, you know, good context about messaging and you know, some of the things that we can do with Dapper uh, inside a session. Um, so am I good to go? Should I just go? Shoot. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna go. All right, folks. So uh, so what I wanna talk about is is messaging, right? And and not only just messaging, but I think an important part of this this whole context for me is the fact that, you know, Dapper for me has always been such an awesome project because it reminds me of stuff that I used to do like before, like there was the word microservice and before, you know, messaging and service discovery and all that stuff was like a thing. Um, I used to like try and build these little apps and solve these little problems inside of our applications um, and companies that I used to work for. And now when Dapper came, I'm just like, oh great, I don't have to write that code anymore. Like someone else could deal with it, right? I think that's just like absolutely amazing. So I'm a big fan of like all of those different things that Dapper has like removed out of my code and kind of allowed me to go somewhere else and put it somewhere else. So I think that's really cool. So today, um, as we all know, like if you're first time you're using Dapper or not, maybe, maybe not. Um, but so Dapper kind of builds on top of this concept of building blocks. And today, the particular building block I want to focus on is going to be the pub someone, right? You can think about like as we're building microservices, like where we, we often want to be able to message between different services, different apps, you know what I mean? Maybe even different between, you know, different ecosystems, right? You want to be able to do messaging and have like asynchronous communication, you know, to be able to kick off workflows, be able to, you know, fire off events and just do different things inside of our app, right? And so as you can imagine, Dapper has a really interesting abstraction that allows us to do that. Now, before we actually dive into it, let's talk super quick about like, what exactly does PubSub mean, right? On a very high level, when we think about PubSub, I have some producer, right? I have a publisher, I have a producer, I have a thing that's like generating messages or events, you know, things that I should know about and work that I have to do. And then what's going to happen is that publisher is going to send a message over on some type of input channel, right? Someone's going to receive that message and it's going to go into something usually like a broker or, you know, some type of mechanism that's going to store that message, look at some of the metadata that's associated with it and determine, okay, well, where do I need to send it? What's that output channel that I need to send it to? And then now on the far side of it, we're going to have the subscribers, right? This could be one or many different folks that are, you know, listening to be like, hey, I'm interested in this topic that's coming off of this queue, right? I'm interested in this information that's coming off of this channel. I'm going to subscribe to this channel so I can, you know, get some information about, you know, what's going on and like, you know, what's the work I need to do as I look at the metadata myself and inspect the message, right? And as you can imagine, Dapper allows us to do that like very easily using like that pub sub um, building block. You know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of you folks know like there's tons of different options when it comes to choosing, well, what's the right um, thing for me to use? Should I use RocketMQ or ActiveMQ or should I use, I don't know, Azure Service Bus or AWS SQS, right? There's so many different choices that we have to make depending on whatever our application needs are. Well, luckily with Dapper, like we don't really need to make those decisions up front. At least when it comes to the developer, I could worry a little bit less about the infrastructure I'm focused more about my code and like the business logic and you know, and the business value that I'm trying to add. And then I could kind of defer like some of that other stuff for later on or have someone else deal with it, which is, which is fine with me. So with that pub sub building block, what we get is like an agnostic API that we could use to be able to push and receive messages. So I don't know if you're familiar with Dapper, you know that we can communicate with that Dapper sidecar, with that Dapper process using HTTP. So that means that if I need to publish a message, I just need to make an HTTP post call. Right? And if I'm receiving messages, I just need to have like some endpoint ready to be able to receive that HTTP message. Right? I don't need any special SDKs. I don't need to bring in NuGet packages or Ruby gems or Java jars or .NET, whatever, like whatever folks are using. Right? I don't need to bring in like any of that additional stuff. Right? I don't need to add additional complexity and additional dependencies to my code. I can just focus on you know, relying on the standards and just sending simple HTTP messages back and forth over that Dapper cycle. Some of the other cool things that that publish subscribe building block offers us is the ability to do cloud events, which essentially is kind of like an envelope to like wrap your messages, 
right? It kind of like, you know, if you send me over, I don't know, some JSON or some, some string data or whatever the case is, like Dapper will create like this envelope and push it over to that message service, push it over to that component implementation to be able to deal with that for you, right? And we'll talk about a little bit more of that as we go on. Um, but some other cool things we get from it, we have like, you know, at least once message delivery, we have topic scoping, which is really cool. So I could, you know, say, well, these applications are able to subscribe to these topics or not, right? And we also have TTL, right? Time to live, which is important. So we can know how to expire our messages or not. Now let's take a look really quickly. You know, some of y'all might have seen this before, maybe some of you have not. But in general, this is how Dapper works, right? Like, so I might have an application that I want to publish a message to, and some other apps on the site want to subscribe to those messages. And so what will happen is that my local app is going to make a call using HTTP or gRPC to my local Dapper endpoint, right? And it's going to use that well-defined URL that Dapper has. In this case, it's a slash public um, endpoint. And then I'm going to let it know, well, this is the PubSub instance I want it to go to. And then also, this is the um, topic I want you to publish to. Now that message is going to go over. In this case, it's going to go to Redis. And then now on the other side, service A and B are both going to receive copies of that message, which, again, depending on, <coughs> excuse me, depending on you know, how many instances you have, you know, one instance of each of those different services is going to be able to get that message. And, then, and you'll see on the other side, too, like there's some endpoint now that Dapper is going to publish that particular message too. So like now that service is gonna say, hey, I have a slash orders endpoint. I want Dapper to send me any type of, you know, messages that are sent over or events that are sent over Redis. I want it to come over there. And the same thing with service B as well too. Now, I just told you that if I have multiple services, there's gonna be multiple copies of those messages that are gonna be sent between those different endpoints. Well, what if I wanted to do some other, you know, well-known messaging patterns like, doing competing consumers. Well, Dapper supports that too. So in the case of, of this, what I can do is as I'm publishing messages into the bus, into the queue, if I wanna have more consumers being able to process that message, but I don't wanna have like, you know, copies of it, I wanna have just like a load balancing situation where I have multiple things listening to that queue, and then one of them is gonna get the message, but all no get copies. We can do that by just essentially scaling out the number of instances of that same Dapper application. Right, because you might know, like in Dapper, you can have like different applications. You can have different application IDs. So if I have one application ID, and I can have multiple instances of that same application ID to kind of just scale out my workload, or if I have multiple applications with different applications IDs, now what will happen is that each application ID is going to get a single copy of that message. Right. So again, if you want to implement those types of patterns, those are some things you need to know about in terms of how Dapper sends its messages over the bus. Now, let's talk about how do I exactly set this up, right? What does it look like for me to register a pub sub component inside of Dapper? And well, it looks something like this. If you kind of take a look at the right side, you'll see that here I'm using like the in-memory pub sub. Now, I'm going to bet that some of y'all didn't know that there was an in-memory pub sub inside of Dapper. And you know what? I didn't know until like a couple of weeks ago either. But that makes it interesting because that means that I can use Dapper's consistent publish subscribe API and I could start working with like an in-memory broker you know what I mean? And whenever I'm ready to go to production, whenever I'm ready to go to, I don't know, maybe our staging environment or some other environment, all I have to do is change the configuration to point to something else. So for instance, if I want to switch and go to RabbitMQ or Redis or again, you know, SQS or Azure Service Bus, all I have to do is just change that YAML definition file and specify the endpoints that I need to go to, the secrets and all these types of stuff. And then Dapper will just now figure it out for me. But again, on my code side, I have a consistent API that I can rely on. I don't have to change my code and I don't have to rely on any third party SDKs. Right? I can rely on the consistency that I get from using Dapper. Now, how about this? Why don't we stop for a second and I'm gonna show you some code and I have an application that's running using PubSub and let's take a look and see what it actually looks like. So I'm gonna head over here to Visual Studio Code. Right? I'm gonna show you like a couple endpoints that I have already configured. So inside of my folder, oh, I don't have a folder open. Let me open this. Thought this was open. Okay, <clears throat> right. Here's an example of a um, Dapper component that I already have. And on my machine, I have a Minikube cluster that's running, I think, like a three-node cluster. And I've already gone ahead and deployed this application. So we're not going to have to sit here and watch me deploy apps and things of that nature. But this essentially is what those component files look like. Right. This is a YAML definition, 
of a workflow queue that I have. And as you can see here, I'm using RabbitMQ and I have like the, you know, the host and some options set up. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that I also have one for Redis. Um, this one is a different queue. This is a, a task pub sub. And then a little bit further down, I have a state store, but that's not really important for this conversation. So what you're seeing here is that I can have multiple pub sub components registered inside a dapper, right? So now what I need to do is as I'm deciding which one to publish to, I need to make sure that I pay attention to the name. What's the name of that pub sub that I want to send those messages to so I can make sure that I'm sending the right message to the right topic running on the right broker, okay? So let me tell you about the app that's running here just so that we can get some context. So I have an ingress service right now. And that ingress service just happens to be written in Node.js, right? And if I take a look at this, right, what you'll see here is that I have this webhook endpoint, right? Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a webhook come in to my ingress. It's going to hit this um, endpoint written in uh, express.js. And then it's going to do a little bit of work. All this stuff up here is not really that important. But here, you're going to see that using Axios, which is you know a client for making HTTP calls in Node and, and JavaScript applications. I'm going to come down here. Hopefully, you all can see this. Uh, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to post a message to that well-defined Dapper endpoint. Now, if you remember what I showed you earlier, I had a Dapper um, pub sub instance called task queue. So that's the name I'm going to give inside of this um, URL path right here. And then customers is actually the name of the, um, <clears throat> of the topic. Right? And then if you kind of scroll down here, you notice I have one for invoices. If I scroll down here, I have another one for fulfillment that's on the workflow queue. Again, I'm showing you this because there's, I'm not using any Dapper SDKs. All I'm doing is talking raw HTTP. Right? I don't have to do anything special to get this working. Right? All I'm doing is just using Dapper and sending messages over that channel. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the receiving side. Right? Like, what, are the, what does it look like to actually get a message from Dapper? Now, I have two apps that are listening to those two different queues. One is a .NET application that's listening to the workflow queue, and the other one is a Python app running with, I think I'm using Fast API for Python, and that one's also listening to the task queue. So again, these are the things that are going to be receiving messages on the other side. So if I take a look at this, so this is my Python Fast API thing. Um, let's head over and take a look at this thing called the Dapper Router. Again, I'm not using any of these Zapper SDKs, but what you notice here is that I have an endpoint called slash subscribe. Actually, it's called slash dapper slash subscribe, right? So if I send any messages over there, right, to you know any of those endpoints, this slash subscribe is going to let Dapper know. It's going to let its sidecar know. Well, what are the different queues and topics you want to register to? So if you take a look here, you can take see that I'm registering to the task queue. I want to listen to the topic called customers. And then also, I have to tell it, well, where do I send that message? Like, what's the route I need to send it to? And you can see that's like a task slash customer. So I have some URL endpoints that you could call by HTTP that's listening here to be able to get those messages back. Okay. And then all that's going to happen, I don't have to do anything special. When my app is, you know, instantiated and up and running, the Dapper Sidecar is going to call this endpoint automatically just to find out, well, hey, is this particular application listening to any queues? Is it listening to any topics? What are they? Now let's go ahead and get that client registered and set up and ready to go, right? So that's one. And then now let's take a look and see like what this task, um, what this task one actually looks like. So here you can see I have my endpoint for customers, right? And then I'm not doing anything special in here. Honestly, all I'm doing is just like I'm just listening to the cloud event that's coming in. We're gonna talk about cloud events in a second. I'm listening to that cloud event. And then I'm just logging some information, right? But in this case, you might do something different. You might want to kick off, you know, some machine learning process. You might want to kick off some type of workflow. You want to update your database. Whatever it is that you want to do, that's not really important. But the fact of the matter is, as you can see here, all I'm doing is just plain old HTML. Um, I'm sorry, plain old HTTP back and forth over the wire. That's all that's happening. Nothing else crazy. No particular dependencies on anything else at all. Right. Now, one of the things that's important here is that as you're returning from your method, once you've received that message, you have to let Dapper know that it got it. So in terms of like saying, hey, I successfully got this message and I successfully am processing this message, I want to go ahead and send like a 200 level status code. So that could be, you know, 200 okay, 
In my case, I'm doing 204 means no content. And then now Dapper will be able to know, well, okay, everything is good. I can remove that message off of the queue, right? Now, as you can imagine, if you return something like a 400 or something else like that, then that would mean that it's just not working. I'm going to show you one more piece of code, and I'm actually going to show you the app that's running. Um, now let's head over to, I think it's in program.cs. There we go. Boom. This is the .NET app, right? Same thing that's happening here. No SDKs, just HTTP endpoints and HTTP client, right? So this particular one is listening to the workflow queue, right? Fulfillment topic, and then there's the order. So there you go. So why don't I go ahead and run this and we can take a look and see how this actually looks. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually trigger some of these uh, endpoints to start listening to each other. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, kubectl logs. And I'm gonna listen to, let's look at the Webflow handler, Webhook workflow handler, there we go. Right, so I'm gonna stream these logs. I'm gonna say Stripe trigger. I'm gonna trigger the, uh, uh, there you go. I'm going to trigger the, uh, oh, that's a lot of them. I'm going to trigger the webhook. So that's one. Let's trigger another one. Let's trigger, uh, let's say customer created, right? So that's another one. And then I'm going to trigger one more. And this time I'm going to do like a checkout session completed, right? And so now you can see, this is just my ingress, like listening to particular events, and then it's sending it over. And right now my ingress control is getting those. But what's happening on the other side as well is that my, Dapper workers are also getting those as well. So if I take a look and say, let's look at the logs for, I wish I could ask you which one you want to see. Um, let's take a look at the task queue, right? And let's listen to those as well. And if I scroll down to the bottom, whoop, too far, come back. If you look here at the bottom, you can notice that it's saying, hey, customer message handler invoked, and I could see some of those different messages that it's getting, right? So that means that my thing that's on the other side is now receiving those Dapper messages and it's processing them. Right, and again, none of them know anything other than I'm speaking to Dapper on HTTP, receiving and sending these messages. Okay, let's head back over to the slides super quick. Right, so we talked about Dapper. We saw how those things move around a little bit. Um, I mentioned that these things are using something called cloud events. So what are cloud events? Um, so essentially cloud events are a specification that creates like a way for us to have a, a well-defined shape or contract about what it looks like to send events back and forth over the wire, right? Like right now I'm showing it to you using like HTTP, but it also works for gRPC. I think they're adding protobuf support. Uh, I think they're supporting um, Avro. I don't know what Avro is, I've never used it, but I think they're supporting that as well. Like, so you have these different options, right? And it's not just like a web thing only, right? Like you have a lot of different transports that it supports. But again, it creates a well-defined shape over what it looks like to be able to send messages. And you know, and there's more than that too, right? Like I know they're working on a discovery API. I think there's a subscription API, um, and then some other things as well that's going to be inside of that bucket. Oops, go back. Now, let's take a look at like what it looks like inside of HTTP, right? So this is what an HTTP um, cloud events binary message kind of looks like, right? Notice in the in the body, like I'm just having my regular code. Like there's no additional code in here, or there's no additional payload, right? It's just action order my stuff that I'm sending over. But then in the headers, I have a lot of these different um, additional headers that are you know, specifying that additional context for um, cloud events. You also have the ability to not put things in headers. Maybe you don't want them in the headers, you want them in the body instead. Well, this is what that JSON payload would look like whenever we're sending things back and forth using cloud events. Now, again, like I mentioned before, Dapper uses it for a couple of different things like routing and you know, um, open telemetry and things of that nature. If you take a look at that right side of the slide right now, like that's what it looks like for my application, right? So this is one that I actually took from some of the data that I'm actually sending back and forth. Now, another thing that I want you to see, like I said, because of the fact that Dapper is using that for, um, because of the fact that Dapper is using that stuff for, there you go, sorry, can't type it and talk at the same time. <laughs> because they're using it for tracing and open telemetry. That means that now, like that trace context flows back and forth. So I might start at HTTP and then I might go over to RabbitMQ and then I might go over to something else. But all that information keeps flowing all the way over with me, which is super important. Now, I think one of the things I wanna do is I wanna port forward a service. So let's say, uh, let's do kubectl. I want to put forward. Uh, I want to put forward the 
Zipkin. I think I have a Zipkin service in here, right? And I think Zipkin works on 9411, I believe. I'm not mistaken. Oh, not that one. 9411, right? There we go. All right, so now if I head back over to my browser, I am going to show you what this looks like, right? So I'm going to pop this off and I'm going to go to localhost 9411, right? And I should have Zipkin open. I should be able to search for stuff. I should be able to see my application here. One, two, three. Now, I know this is small. I can't do anything about it. It's super small, I know. Look at this. If I control plus the thing, do you notice how like the UI gets bigger and th the thing gets smaller? My bad, I can't control that. That's just how this thing is. But as you can see, there's three endpoints there with Zipkin. And Zipkin is showing you, okay, I'm sending information to the workflow worker. That's the one that's on the top right side. And then also the one on the bottom right side is the task view worker. And then, you know, my ingress is on the left side. So again, I'd be able to get that traceability as I have information coming in and then I'm sending it out to Dapper, kicking off my workflows and, you know, different tasks and things of that nature. So that's, that's always something cool to know that you can do. Now, I think I only have 20 minutes. I think I'm close to 20 minutes, if not over. So what I want to do is just talk about a couple of the things that we weren't able to show. Um, so one, Dapper also has like API scoping, which is really cool. Um, and then you can not only do API scoping, but you also do topic scoping. So like I mentioned before, it's kind of like a security mechanism that allows you to define declaratively, well, these are the things that I, I want this particular application to be able to do. These are the APIs I wanted to be able to call them. These are the messages I wanted to be able to subscribe to or topics I wanted to be able to subscribe to. And we can lock that down in our YAML. Another thing too that I think is really cool is that we also have the opportunity to scale up and scale down automatically using Kata. So Kata, if you're not familiar, is you know uses you know um, the horizontal pod scaler, which is really cool. So you know I can point it at my rabbit or my Redis, or I can point it at a thing, and based on whatever conditions we define, maybe I have a hundred items in my queue. That's too many. I need to create additional instances, right? And we can set maximums and minimums and thresholds and all that types of stuff. But then, no, I don't manually have to come in and start scaling these things up for myself. It'll happen automatically, and Kate will do that to me, which is great. <laughs> now, that being said, if folks want to see the code, um, here's where it lives. Um, you can head over to github.com slash social philip, dapper messenger, and you can see it there. You can check it out. Um, here's also some links to docs and slides and some other cool things that you should check out. But with that being said, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to open it up for some questions. If folks have anything you want to ask or know, let me know. And then we could talk about it. Don't be shy. I can't see you, so if you're asking questions, I don't know. Great. Well, thank you all so much. Again, really sorry I couldn't be there in person. Um, hope you all have a good KubeCon and have a good time at DapperCon. And then, you know, maybe maybe I'll see you in the Discord channel. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody.